code detail safely. Hi, I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. This is the DIY Detail Podcast. Today we're going to introduce you to the safety of detailing. Detailing inherently is fun but it shouldn't cause you any problems later on in life. And that's what we're trying to help here. Well, and we talked to the do-it-yourselfer, the enthusiast, and the pro. Now, with the pro space, we kind of have a sense of what you should be doing, wearing a mask when you're maybe applying a ceramic coating, right. wearing gloves, you know, complying with OSHA. But the do-it-yourselfer, it's almost like you throw it out the window because you're not even thinking that just, in depth. I want everybody to detail safely and have fun. Right, you know, it's, I just do this once a week. Not a problem, I'm not gonna you know, inhale too much. You are inhaling too much. So we'll start with the obvious, we're wearing gloves. And we have nice red gloves now, just so you see them in the videos. That is the whole premise behind having the red gloves. We want you to see them. We want you to see that they're there, they're active. They're, right. they're uh, protecting us. And most of our chemicals are not an issue. They're not dangerous to have on your hands. Of course, you don't want to drink them, you don't want them in your eyes, you don't want them on your skin too much, but our hands over time sort of build up a, a little bit of a crust and that helps, but it's not as good as gloves. And there's one professional detailer that has a YouTube channel, I'll, I'll shout him out, Phil from Miranda Detailing. Phil has a horror story with gloves, he just can't wear gloves. And I see him applying coatings all the time, not wearing gloves, and to me, that is one of the most dangerous things a detailer can do. Because most coatings are fluorinated. And that fluorination that's in the coatings is extremely, extremely dangerous. So Phil, if you're watching this, please find some gloves that work for you. But the coating is probably the most dangerous chemical that we use. And breathing, the solvents that are in the chemical, that's what gives it the, the smell that we get from the coating. But in reality, that's not that big a deal. Now, if you want to wear a mask, I'm not telling you not to, it's a great thing to do. But please, please wear gloves. And we've seen some people, and this is again in the pro space, but some home hobbyists might be uh, wanting to do this, and that is spraying a coating on. No, no, no. Because it gets in the air, right? It gets on your skin, yeah. you breathe it in. It's, it's the same reason you know, a painter in a paint booth needs more than just a mask on when they're painting. Right, and a coating is actually worse than paint when it comes to our health. When it's atomized, when it's in the bottle on the applicator on the car, not an issue. When it's atomized, it becomes an issue. And you'll see people, they're wearing a little 3M mask, they have gloves on, but their sleeves are rolled up and they're spraying it all over a car. Very, very, very dangerous. I can't say that enough. Basically, if you're doing that, you need full PPE, so personal protection equipment. You need full PPE, which means Tyvek suit from top to bottom, the hoodie, the whole thing, and a positive flow mask, which means it's connected to an air source that's outside of the paint booth, and air is washing over your head, down your face, and out the bottom of the mask. So there's no outside air that can get into that mask. That is extremely important. So if you're one of these people that's spraying on coatings, oh, I'm just spraying the grill, I'm just spraying the wheels. No, just don't do it. Wow, that's a big wake-up call for everybody. We believe in this stuff. We believe in our ceramic coatings. We believe in our products. The power of them to not only enhance the appearance of your vehicle, right. but the power of them to help you have fun, fulfill you emotionally in that moment where you're taking care of probably the second most expensive investment you have. Right? Yeah. Like, this is our life. We believe in detailing. We just want to like make sure that you understand, you know, if it's on your skin, it's in your bloodstream, it's the largest organ in your body. Yeah. So there's certain things that are going to be common sense for you to be healthy, um, hopefully in the long term, you yeah, know, including exactly. using our, our products. So, right. And it's not to say that our products are worse than others, that's not it at all. No. It's just any chemical, even hand soap. Yeah, exactly. Uh, is, is, is entering into your body. So the idea here is just, we care about you guys, we want you to be safe. Yeah. The next part, and Nick touched on it a little bit, is atomization. And there are some companies that actually have a chemical specifically for this, and that is a tornador. So a tornador is, if you have a compressor, it's an amazing tool for getting grit out of carpet and stains and you know, door panels, things like that. It is forced air, but some of them come with a bowl on the bottom of them. And that bowl takes a bit of that liquid, puts it into the tornador and atomizes it. And it's like a cloud coming out of there under pressure. Well, the tornador really only needs water. It's the action of the tool that does the job, not the chemical you put in it. And 
It's very important. People ask us, oh, your rinseless wash is safe. Can I put that? No. Water. If you're not willing to drink it, if you're not willing to have your children drink it, don't put it in a tornador. I uh, talked to Graham Love in yeah. Florida. He was using a different brand of rinseless wash and he was putting it in the tornador basin yeah. uh, years ago. Yeah. And he was having lung issues and he talked to you about it. You explained it to him and he said they resolved. Yeah. So Graham, if you're out there, shout out to you for helping us you know, tell this story, but yeah. uh, it's a real thing. Right, so please, if you have a tornador or if you're atomizing anything. So I've seen people using guns to put on tire dressing and that works, but you need to protect yourself. The chemicals, once they're atomized, are a lot more dangerous than when they're in a bucket or when they're in a spray can. And and in the spray bottle, there's not that much atomization going on. Yes, it's transferring it, but it's not the fine atomization that you get from compressed air. Uh, I don't think I've ever really seen detailers wear eye protection. I haven't really either. Like, what am I not doing? Like, or what am I risking by not wearing eye protection? Well, first of all, you know, we're spraying, we have the hose out, we have the pressure washer. The grit that's on the vehicle, the chemicals that are on the vehicle, you can get bounce back. And that bounce back can go into your eye. So I have to wear eye protection. I have no choice. I couldn't see the camera if I didn't have them on. But that being said, you need some form of eye protection when you're detailing for those little incidents. And especially if you're using a blow gun on the interior of the car. That's when you've got all sorts of dust in the air. It's gritty. It's, you might be you know, spraying on a carpet yep, yep. and it's flying in the air. You don't want to not protect your eyes. What about ear protection? Oh, easily one of the most overlooked ones. Detailing can be loud. Now, if you're just detailing with a hose and a bucket, no need. But as soon as you get out the pressure washer, the compressor, the tornador, the, uh, the steamer even, all these things make noise, the polisher. The more you can protect your hearing, the better. And if you have like a, you know, you're, you dry your car with a, a master blaster or a, um, what do you call it, leaf blower, that's it, thank you. Uh, so you're drying it with a leaf blower, that's even more noise. So yeah, put in those earbuds. You don't have to turn the music on, just put in the earbuds. Yeah, it's very helpful. Yeah, that's another thing to think about. What about the ladders and the stu step stools? You always talk about don't climb on the, the tires right. to, to reach your roof. Don't step on the door jam to reach the roof. Why not? Okay, for tires A, you're probably in the middle of washing and they're full of soapy water. They're slippery. And yes, they're rubber. They're not that grippy. They're round. It's not a good thing. Uh, and you have no real handholds on the vehicle. Yes, some SUVs, trucks, you have that grab bar at the top. Do you really want to be hanging off that grab bar as your feet slip off? No. And you slam into the side of the vehicle. Just get one of those nice little platforms. They sell platforms that are, what, four feet long, a foot and a half wide, and they're adjustable height. They're great. If you have a lifted truck and you're going higher, get a proper ladder that allows you to reach without banging into the vehicle, without falling. It's got a nice stable base, and it's gonna help you in your detailing. It's gonna make you a better detailer and more efficient. Yes, moving that platform around may seem like it's a hard thing to do. It isn't. They're lightweight, they're easy to move around. Not sponsored, but we're gonna put in the description the one I recommends we get no affiliate links no, no. enough people ask about this that if you're wondering the the stool that, that you like yeah I believe it's from Home Depot I can't remember yeah it's We're gonna a gorilla ladders from Home Depot we'll put the link in there for you out there we just want to help you because if you're like me when I started out it's like just tell me what to just put it in my veins you know what I mean? yeah. whatever you got give it to me yeah so that'll be helpful just to know what uh, what I have used yeah and then you know standing on the door sill a uh, few risks there. First of all, it could be slippery. And a lot of people, oh, well, I don't want to scratch the door sill, so I put a microfiber towel down. Well, you've just thrown that microfiber away, basically, because you're stepping on it, you've got grit on your feet, you've scrapped that microfiber. That's a dollar every time, or two dollars every time you wash a car. Second thing is, you can't reach the whole roof from there. If you have an SUV, like a, let's say a Suburban, that back door sill, you're not getting to the back of the, you know, to the hatch. No way. So you need somewhere to climb up on. Get a ladder, get a platform. What else are we we're not talking about as it relates to safety? Well, we talked about hand protection. We talked about atomization. We talked about that. One thing is posture. Mm. And a lot of people, you know, as Nick corrects his posture. Yeah, there we go. So you'll notice I have one leg down. The reason I do that is if I'm like this, my back is round. And over time, that's going to get really annoying for my back. 
By putting one leg down like this, okay. it straightens my back out. All right. So I have better posture. Now, there are ways of getting better posture when you're detailing. And posture is not only when you're sitting on a stool. When you're standing, when you're polishing. I've seen people polish that they've got like one shoulder up here and one down there and they're all crooked and they look like Quasimodo. And when they're done polishing, they're all sore and they don't know why. Take a little video of yourself, whatever you're doing in detailing, take a little video of yourself and watch it. It's like a professional athlete. They'll see that, oh, that step that I made, I shouldn't have made that. I hear longevity experts talk about this sometimes, trying to convince a high schooler to think about what it's gonna be like when you're 90. Yeah. It's like literally impossible. Right. But I would say a detail in their 20s doesn't give a blank about no, that exactly. either, right? Right. You've had back surgery. You're not 20 anymore. Exactly. What words of it, if you want to be alive, when you're 50, when you're 60, right? You want to still be 70. detailing when you're in your 60s. Just, just assume you're going to be alive and you still want to detail, right? Yeah. What would you want to tell people in their 20s who are going to do that glory pose and know all the day, you know what I mean? They're going to get all fancy yeah. for the gram and they're going to do the things. They're not going to care. They're not going to wear your protection. Like, talk about some of the things that you have in terms of wisdom. Right. So protect yourself. And that protection, like we say, is these gloves. It's ear protection. It's eye protection. And posture. Posture, posture, posture. Having a bad back shouldn't be a side effect of detailing. Having a great smile should be a side effect of detailing. Having fun should be a side effect of detailing. Having a bad back should not be a side effect of detailing. And there's a lot of ways to prevent it. First of all is using the tools that are available to you. So there are ways of polishing a car that to get to these lower sections on these stools, we'd have to be bending over like this. And you've seen videos where Nick is actually sitting on the ground. And that's actually a better posture than sitting on the stool and bending over. Really? Yeah, and these stools, they're height adjustable somewhere. There we go. So bring it down as low as you can when you're down low. And if it's not low enough, get some knee pads and get on your knees. And kneeling and squatting, are actually better postures for you than sitting. Yeah, squatting feels very primal. Like, you know, you're yeah, out in the wild. Our, and our know, body kids, is designed to squat. Our kids body, do it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And our body is designed to kneel. So kneeling is actually a very safe... Kneel, you mean like on one knee or what is... On one knee, on two knees, okay. or knee pads, always. Uh, so in the trade school, back in the 60s and 70s, for body shop technicians, they used to teach them to cross their legs underneath them and their knees and sit on their feet. That is the posture they actually taught in school. And uh, one of the body techs that I had in my body shop, that's how we always sat beside a car. So he was super flexible like that? Super flexible. Like a yogi or something. But yeah. in his 60s. Yeah. And it was nothing for him to kneel beside a car. Mind you, and then I had employees that were in their 30s that could barely get down to a rocker panel. Go, oh, uh, it's sore. So protect yourself and learn about posture. Learn what works for you. And when you're polishing, we mentioned it before, the, you know, the, the Instagram pose where you're almost smelling the polish. Our polish smells great. You don't need to smell it. It smells like bananas. That's as far as you need to know. Don't get down there and smell it. The other thing that's happening is you're bent over the vehicle. Your shoulders might be on a different angle. One is supporting more weight than the other. Try to stay square and upright at all times. And that is going to prevent you from having a bad back down the road. And even if you're in your 20s and 30s and you had an intensive day of polishing and you go home and, oh, it stings a little. That is telling you something. That's your body going, hey, hey don't do that again. What about boat detailing? I see guys in extreme postures detailing boats. I mean, that looks like hard work. I've done about a half a dozen of them. Yeah. You know, just in, often enough to be like, wow, I'm getting paid today. And then you're like, oh, now I know I don't do these. These yeah. are so much work, right? But any advice for those guys? Yeah, basically analyze what you're doing. There's no reason to be in a contortionist style posture. There's always tools available to you in ways to get around it. Uh, I detail airplanes. Well, when I detail an airplane, I rent a skyjack because I'm not climbing all over that plane. I'm not doing things that I shouldn't be doing. So be sure that you're safe. And I don't want to fall on a $3 million plane and dent it. It's just not a good thing. It's a bad way to end the day. So having the proper tools that are available to us, use them. So we mentioned ladders. We mentioned all sorts of things. You want to stay square, straight, not on an angle, not hunched over, 
try to be as natural as you can. And when you're standing up tall, standing straight, pretend you're in the forces. So those of you that are in the forces, thank you for your service. But if you're in the Army, if you're in the Navy, they always teach proper posture there for a reason. I'm trying to think of some of the safety mistakes I've made or the ones of friends. I had a friend fall off a car yep. uh, doing a roof thing yep. and had to get surgery on his wrist. Yep. Um, you were at a training once at my shop and I, I actually had one of those stools and I don't know what happened. I was moving it the wrong way and it dented the side of this big Sprinter van. Yeah. So I had to pay for the PDR on that. Um, I don't know. I, I think I've done the all night polishing too many times to really yeah. count. And, and I knew, you know when you just know in your gut, I'm like, I'm really tired right now, and I have a lot of caffeine in my system, but I'm really groggy. Like, I have a feeling I'm gonna make a mistake. Yeah, and I don't think I burned any paint there, but I'm sure that I, I've, I've made mistakes. It's just, it, it was asking for it at right. that point, right? Yeah, and exactly, and being overly tired is not a good thing. So, if this is a hobby for you, it shouldn't be like, oh, I have to detail again. No, if it's a hobby, it should be fun. And if you're tired, don't start the job. Uh, for myself and my shops, we opened at eight, we closed at five. Nobody stayed late, nobody came in early. That was one of the rules. We didn't work seven days a week, we worked five. And that is for a reason. Your level of efficiency and safety drop after an eight hour workday. That's why most workdays are eight hours. Some factories will stretch it to 12, some uh, you know, stores, things like that. But you're not in it after seven or eight hours, you're just, you've dropped off. So at that point, get some rest. It's better to, you know, you're polishing and you're starting to feel tired, it's better to stop and come back earlier the next morning than it is to soldier on. I think you know you have experience when you can trust that voice or that gut feeling that says it's time to hang it up. Even though I have work that I need to be getting done, right. I'm better starting fresh in the morning. And it's yeah. just amazing like when you look at it with fresh eyes like, oh my gosh, I'm doing such a better, more efficient job now. Yeah. Even with editing videos. That's exactly. what it is for me. It's yeah, like, just walk away, relax. the next morning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So hopefully that is helpful for all of you out there. I, I don't know if we want to invite you to comment below. Yes, please. Some of the old folks out there, older veterans, you know, I mean, like more than five years in the industry. I don't yeah. know. What are, what are some tips and tricks and horror stories that, that you think could help other people? Yeah, exactly, because we all have our horror stories. We all have our issues. I've been a, you know, a safety-minded person person all my life. So I still have great hearing. My eyesight is natural. I was eight years old. I was wearing glasses. So that has nothing to do with detailing. Uh, and I don't have lots of diseases and th things, you know, thankfully. Knock on wood or whatever. You know. That being said, yes, no hair. But that's, you know. <laughs> also not detailing. Yeah, not, not detailing related. That being said, protect yourself. You only have one body to work with. And yes, you know, the medicine these days is incredible. Surgeons can do a lot of stuff. I've had two back operations and they had nothing to do with detailing. So really? yeah, other, other activities that I do are what hurt my back. So detailing wasn't one of them because uh, I've always maintained a proper posture when detailing. It's something that if I'm in a bad posture for a minute or two, I know it. My body's yeah. going, oh, stop, uh, you know, back up. How can you settle yourself in? And you know, when polishing, that's the one where we see the most odd, weird things. And you know, people are polishing and they're stretching over to there, stretching over to there instead of just moving over. Keep a smaller area. Never go past the width of your shoulders. Move with your feet as you're polishing as opposed to doing this, right? Yeah, or just stay in a small section. Right, yeah. stay in a small section and then, okay, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, and then move over. So And stop using wheel acid detailers. We know it can be working for you, but also be very dangerous for you and the vehicle. And yeah, you know, there's some nasty wheels sometimes that uh, I've seen wheel acid do wonders on. But yeah. But keep that in the professional space. I would recommend a respirator. It's just not, it's not good. Uh, so technically, if you're using wheel acid, you need long sleeves, long pants, no shorts, no Crocs, uh, no sandals, a rubber apron, rubber gloves, and uh, acid uh, resistant footwear. Really? Yeah. That's how serious it is? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, you heard it there first, folks here on the DIY Detail Podcast. Yep. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, leave them below. We love answering your questions. That's why we're here. We're here for education. And Nick, is there another video they might want to watch? There's another podcast very similar to this one that I think you're going to want to watch, and you can find it right here.